So many people were having a problem with the descending pain pathway. So I'm going to make this little vignette and go through it so you can listen to it at your own convenience. So when you look at slide 42, you can see on the spinal cord the primary first order afferent neuron that comes into the dorsal horn and it innervates with that second order spinal mesencephalic neuron. Remember, this is the spinal mesencephalic tract which is going to ascend and either terminate in the locus ceruleus, the blue spot, or the periaqueductal gray. Now when that painful stimulus comes in, right, you're going to excite that glutamate neuron that's within that spinal mesencephalic tract. And initially, what happens in the locus ceruleus is that there is an excitation of a noradrenergic neuron that descends back down into the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and releases norepinephrine in the, sp in the dorsal horn. So it is activating alpha-2 both postsynaptically and presynaptically to attenuate that pain response. Well then let's look at what happens to the other fibers that extend to the periaqueductal gray. Glutamate is going to excite the enkephalin inter interneuron that is going to then release the brakes, if you will. It's going to inhibit the GABA neuron, which is normally keeping the system quiet. So the glutamate excites the enkephalin interneuron. Enkephalin is released onto a GABA neuron, which is normally firing. And now that GABA neuron no longer fires. And so what happens? Now a glutamate connection from the periaqueductal gray to the Rafi Magnus is allowed to happen. So glutamate gets released into the Rafi Magnus onto another enkephalin interneuron. This then causes the release of enkephalin on another GABA interneuron and reduces the amount of GABA that is flowing, if you will, in the Rafi Magnus. What does this do? Well now there is a serotonin neuron from the medulla, the Rafi Magnus in the medulla, and it is excited now because its inhibition has been released. And what happens? Well, serotonin is released into the dorsal horn and it causes other interneurons containing enkephalin to release more enkephalin and thus blunt the pain response. Now that is a summary of the descending pain pathway.